everybody and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and the Crochet Swancho Crochet Along for 2022. I am so happy to be able to teach you this fun and fashionable piece. You can make it with a cowl or without, totally up to you. It is meant to be a fun piece for you to make. I designed this piece with my friend Robin Chachula and we are sure, we were sure to put in a lot of fun stitches, some unique construction, and a lot of teaching moments for this sweater poncho. That's what a swancho is if you aren't sure about that. Um, so I hope that you will trust in this pattern and join me along this journey. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the journey before we jump into the actual pattern because I think it's important, especially for those of you who have never done a crochet along with me before. First and foremost, foremost, hi, my name is Marley Bird and I am a knitwear and crochet instructor. Not just a designer, but an instructor. I love to teach people how to knit and crochet and advance their skills. For that reason, when I do these crochet alongs, I like to approach them as if I'm teaching you a class. Just like you were joining me at our local yarn store and we were sitting around a table and it's just you and me and I'm teaching you about the pattern, how to do the stitches, why we're doing the construction this way, why are we doing the stitches this way, what are some things you need to pay attention to as you go along. Because my ultimate goal is not only for you to get a finished sweater that you love, but to take the skills that you've learned and apply those to future projects. I am not that instructor that's just like, like here, here's how you do a double crochet, here's how you do a, a double crochet cluster and go read the pattern and move on. That's, that's not how I roll. If you're looking for quick, precise, um, and just like to the point instructions without a lot of extra explanation, I'm not gonna be your teacher. I like to make sure that I teach you the how and the why, all right? So I just want to preface that before we go too far into this crochet along. If you are in, uh, adventurous beginner, an intermediate or experienced crocheter, you are going to get a lot out of this. I promise you. Uh, for those of you who are adventurous beginners, it might seem a little tricky at the start, but I want you to remember this. It is only yarn and it is only a hook. You can do this. Might take, take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but I know that you can complete these stitches. They are not like super complicated stitches or anything uh, that is unmanageable. It's just gonna take a little bit of time for you to get to do them a little bit. For those of you who are intermediate or experienced, it might be that we have a little bit of a different type of construction or the way we work the stitches. That'll be a little bit different from you. So I wanna encourage you to watch all of the videos to gather the information. Don't make assumptions on knowledge that you might've learned um, from other patterns or other teachers. See what it is when I say, move the markers. Little tip there, that's a, that's, a, that's a big thing in this pattern, moving those markers. You want to make sure that you, you don't make assumptions and that you um, kind of just, I don't wanna say follow the pattern with blind faith because that's not exactly it. Although, I mean, I feel like it's, it's done really well. We've had several people test it and it's a good job. But I do want you to have faith in me, have faith in Robin. Have faith in the testers. Have faith that you're gonna have a project at the end that you're really going to enjoy. All right, so now that I've kind of put out the, the expectations of what this crochet along will be for you as far as a class, let's talk a little bit about the crochet along, okay? We are going to do this crochet along event for four weeks. Each of those weeks, you will get a new video tutorial along with the pattern instructions. At the end of the event, the entire pattern will be placed in a PDF format available on marleybird.com and yarnspirations.com, okay? So if you're coming to this crochet along after the event is over, does that mean you can't participate? Absolutely not. You can absolutely watch these videos, participate along, get the pattern either from marleybird.com or yarnspirations.com and join in the fun. Get a finished sample that you're going to love. Um, so I wanted to make sure you know that there are going to be video tutorials for each section of the pattern along the way. Now, after the pattern is in the PDF format, it is all presented to you in one big pattern. It's not gonna be presented as, oh, here's section one, here's section two. So you will wanna make uh, sure that you're 
coinciding the videos with the part of the pattern you're in uh, if you are watching this and you're only following along with the PDF at a future date. Okay, um, along with the videos and the pattern sections, there is a Facebook group that is dedicated to all of the Marley Bird crochet alongs. So whether you're participating in this one or maybe it was one of the shawls we've done before, you can join that Facebook group. And I've put a link in the video description box beneath this video. So as long as Facebook groups are a thing, that will be a thing. So you will be able to join in the fun. And it doesn't matter if you're joining us right Right now in 2022 or you're joining us in 2032 as long as that Facebook group is there you can come and join in ask questions hopefully there's still gonna be people there that have done this swancho and will be able to help you out hopefully I'll still be there and be able to help you out all right so I just wanted to make sure you guys know that now, those of you who are just like, okay, Marley, I subscribed to you, I saw this pop up, but I didn't know anything about the Swan Show. It's probably because you aren't part of my Facebook group, Marley's Minions, and you're probably not getting the newsletters, the Marley's newsletters. These are really fun to get, so make sure you sign up to those. And here's how you're gonna do it. Again, in the video description box right down there below, I've put a link to the blog post for this entire crochet along. In there, you're gonna find the details about the crochet along, the material list, the gauge, the, the schedule, everything you need is going to be there. But then also, on my website, you'll be able to sign up for the Marley Bird newsletter. That way you don't miss out on any of this in the future, okay? So if you're just now watching this video, you are not too late to join. Get some yarn, come and join in the fun. You will not get behind, okay? You'll be just fine, all right? You guys got that? Okay, so the details for this crochet along are in that blog post, and where's that blog post? in the video description box down there below. So make sure you click on that link that will take you to my website where you can get all of the information. I've even put links to the yarn I used in that blog post. As long as that yarn is available, you'll be able to click that link and go get it directly from yarnspirations.com. Um, but yeah, that's how that goes. All right, so we have talked about the expectations, we've talked about how to get the materials, and now it's really a big thing of, all right, I'm ready to jump in. What are we gonna do? What, what, what's the first step? All right, so first things first. Once you get your yarn and you have your hooks, and I'm saying hooks because you're gonna have to do a gauge swatch to get the hook size that gets you a close enough gauge to our swancho, all right? So here's the deal. Let's take a look down here. If we take a look at this swancho, which I, can I just tell you guys how much I love this? Um, this one here, you guys can see that it is the, the crew neck version. This one is the large, extra large version, and I'm wearing the 2X, 3X, if you look up. You can see like the size difference. They are, they are meant to be oversized, okay? They're meant to be oversized, which was an important factor to me um, choosing this for the crochet along, because when you're doing your gauge swatch, I want you to make sure that you're getting as close to the stitch gauge as you possibly can. Even if that means your row gauge is a little bit shorter, that's all right, because the weight of this garment is going to stretch those rows out, and you will eventually get that row gauge that you need. Not only that, because this is not a fitted garment, meaning the raglan shaping portion has to fit perfectly around this part of your body, it is meant to be longer. It is meant to be dolman-esque. It is okay if it's a little bit shorter. Also, because we're working top down, if you needed it to go a little bit longer, you could do that, all right? So there's a lot of customization capability to this pattern. So when you're doing your gauge swatch, it's most important that you can get as close to your stitch gauge as possible versus row gauge. And this is gonna be one of the few times that you guys will ever hear me say that gauge is not super duper important, meaning you don't have to get exactly the right gauge. If it's a little bit tighter or a little bit looser, it's not the end of the world, okay? Your, your garment is still going to fit, whether it's a little bit tighter or a little bit looser. Like I could stand this one here, if I wanted to make this a little bit tighter, I, I totally could still wear this. Like I would, I would be happy with this being a little bit tighter. So if you are somebody who's so stressed out about gauge, first off, it's you're gonna be okay. 
Let's take a step back, take a deep breath. It's just yarn and a hook. You can rip it out and restart, and then you're getting all that, that work in for um, even more of a value of your yarn, and so it's gonna be just fine. But for this particular garment in particular, there's a lot of wiggle room. So even if your gauge is a little bit tighter or a little bit looser, it's still going to be okay. I think my biggest words of caution here are going to be that you don't want to get you don't want to, we all crochet differently, right? That's how our gauges are also different. We all crochet differently. I don't want you to crochet and get sloppy stitches in order to get gauge. Like there's some people who crochet and they really loosen those stitches a lot and make really sloppy stitches to get gauge. I'd rather you have a, a nice, more uniform stitch versus a sloppy stitch. And I'm going to let that be subjective to you. You decide what's sloppy and what's not sloppy. Um, just know that, I mean, I don't want you to be like a full inch and a half off of your gauge swatch but if you're like a half an inch off it's 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 not it's not the super end of the world. You're going to be okay, all right? It, it's going to be okay. Um, there's a lot of room in this swancho, all right? So that's the deal with gauge. Let's talk about sizing, okay? Because you might be like, right, so there's all this room for gauge. Like what size do I choose, Marley? Well, let's talk about size. Taking a look down here, like I mentioned, this here, this is the large, extra large size. This is actually Robin's Swancho. And then I'm wearing the 2X, 3X. This Swancho is much larger than Robin's actual bust size, okay? It's much larger. But it fits her beautifully, nice and oversized, because that's the way it's designed. It's designed to have these nice um, shaping of like the, the trapezoid looking here. Um, same thing with the sleeve. The sleeve is less drastic as the body, okay? Because you don't need as many stitches on the sleeve as you do the body. We need the body to grow larger. Um, but here's the crazy thing. I normally wear a 2X, 3X in clothes. I'm a size 1820, all right? If those of you out there, if that helps at all. I have a 52, 53 inch bust. It all depends on the time of year, right? Um, and I'm wearing the 2X, 3X. You can see how large it is on me. It is large. It is very large. I actually can fit into this one. All right, Robin encouraged me to put it on and show you guys, so maybe I'll do that towards the end of this video. I'll put it on so that you can see it. But I can actually fit into this particular size. This is the large, extra large. And when I say I can fit into it, I fit into it, but it's not oversized on me. It is now like a fitted sweater on me when I put this on. So depending on the style you're looking for, for your swancho, some of the testers wanted theirs to be tighter. You'll actually see Renee Montana. She made one out of a very beautiful purple color and hers is a little bit tighter on hers. And she also made her sleeves a little bit longer. And so hers, she really customized it a little bit more. So when you're choosing what size to make, you kind of have to think to yourself, how big do I want it on myself? And the best thing you could do, honestly, take a look at the schematic. Look at what the finished measurement is on the schematic. All right, so we put the finished measurements on the schematic. Take a look at those, compare it to what your, your, your actual bust size is and be like, am I comfortable with that? If you have a swancho type piece in your, your closet, take it out and measure it. See what it measures and see which one is a good size for you. All right, does that make sense? The thing here is that if it's too big, I don't know if I could really call something too big unless you're like a size two, like my my son's girlfriend and she put on this, it, it would look like way too big on her. Like I would not say if you're typically a size extra small, small, don't go and make a 2X, 3X. But I mean, you're it's going to be oversized. But um, you guys know what size I am. I just gave you my measurements and I can fit into the extra large, large. I'll put it on later for you so you can see. So you just have to hold tight for that. Um, but that's hopefully helping you to choose size. Um, you want it to be something that is oversized, unless you don't. If you want it to be more fitted, that's totally fine. Choose a size that's a little bit more fitted. Or conversely, if you are making your gauge swatch a little bit tighter and you're like, well, I don't know if I should make the large, extra large, or the 2X, 3X, you could make your, your, your actual stitches a little bit tighter and make the 2X, 3X. Now, it's still going to be extra large. Like, it's still going to be oversized, but it won't be as oversized as, like, mine is on me. It'll be a little bit more snug on you. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Like, here's, here's 
bare bones. Here's what it boils down to you guys. When we're working a crochet along, it's important to me as a designer to be able to teach you and, and work you, not work with you, work with you, that's the proper way to say it, work with you to get a finished project that you're going to love. So I try and choose crochet alongs or knit alongs for that matter that are, are very um, forgiving and generous. So that way, if we get off a little bit with our gauge or maybe we, we work it a little bit too far or whatever it is, it's not the end of the world. Like there's some exceptions that, that changes things up. But for the most part, I try and choose things that they are forgiving, okay? So just remember, this is supposed to be fun and it is supposed to be oversized. So if you're working along and it looks like it's getting really small, that's not, that's not good, unless that's what you're really going for, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be oversized. All right, now let's talk about the fun factor, okay? <laughs> I know, I know I'm talking so much. This is the first video. Not all the videos will be this much uh, conversation, but the first one's always the longest one, right? And uh, kind of going along the coattails of that, the first part of this crochet along is, in my opinion, the most difficult. And it's because we are starting from scratch. We are starting from the very beginning and establishing a pattern. We don't have anything that we're really kind of solidifying in our Memory. All we have is this gauge swatch with some stitches that we might be familiar with. But now, instead of just working back and forth on a little gauge swatch, we're going to be working in the round with a lot of stitches and moving some markers. There's a lot of things happening. So what I really want to say here is that when you sit down to do this crochet along, a couple things. I want you to make sure that you are in, 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 I want to say full focus. I, if you've had a long day, the kids have been on your back, you had a difficult time at work, or maybe you're just tired. Maybe today is not the day to start. Set the yarn down. It's okay. You can start tomorrow. It is all right. It is more important that you are in the frame of mind, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take my time, not rush through this. It's okay. And you know what? In that matter, guys, if you don't get through part one in week one, that's okay. You can do it in week two. Nobody is going to um, tell you, oh my gosh, you failed. No, you did not fail. You did not fail at all. You work at your own pace, okay? You have my permission. If you need to write that down, say Marley said, I can work at my own pace, you can write that down, okay? You have my permission. I just want you to make sure you're enjoying the process. And I do know that because of the concentration level we have to give at the start of this pattern in particular, we need to make sure we are all hands on deck focusing on the pattern, okay? Now, that is not to say it's super difficult, it's that we have to establish the pattern, we have to establish a rhythm, we have to establish the pattern, that's the, the whole frame of mind. And as we're doing it, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I start a pattern, until I get about six or seven rounds or rows in, I'm like, oh, okay, now I can finally see it. Before then, I'm really, I'm a slave to what the words say, to what the, the diagram says, and I'm just like, what's happening? But then once I start to see um, a rhythm happening, I'm like, all right, I get that, okay? So that's, that's the fun factor I'm talking about. In part one, it might be a little bit more concentration than what you're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do this the whole way. I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna have to like be super concentration the whole way through this pattern. You're gonna be fine once we get past part one. It's just the part one might be a little bit tricky because it takes some time to establish that raglan shaping. If you've ever made a sweater before, just uh, you know, this top part of the sweater, this is the yoke of the sweater, to me, it's always the most difficult because there's a lot of shaping and stuff that's happening up here because we're no longer just going up and down on a body. We're, we're shaping up to a neck, okay? We're, for this, we're going down from a neck to compensate for our shoulders, for our bust. There's a lot happening. So we have to be able to focus on that, all right, guys? So just make sure you have yourself some, some nice tea, some water, some soda, some coffee, whatever it is that you like to have next to you, maybe some M&Ms. You know, treat yourself with maybe a... Uh, um, I like Starburst, so maybe pop a Starburst in your mouth every time you finish a round, like that's a good thing you could do. Um, just make sure that your concentration level is ready to go. Whew. 
man, that's a lot of talking. I think I've, I've talked like 20 minutes. I'm so sorry about that. But hey, it all has to be said. It all has to be said, okay? So let's recap one more time, just to make sure in my own mind that I've told you everything you need to know. You have what to expect with this crochet along. You have the link to where you can sign up for the newsletter and get all the information about the crochet along. It's right down there. Newsflash, that link is the link you will be going to throughout the entire crochet along to get the link for the next part of the pattern, okay? So you will definitely want to bookmark that link if you don't know how to do it. I put the information in that blog post as well. I try and be full service. You too can have a Marley Bird folder. All right, so we have where to get the materials. We have, um, we've talked about gauge, all right, the importance of gauge. We've talked about choosing the size. We've talked about the necessity to be able to concentrate on part one especially, but understanding that it's not gonna be all that concentration level the whole pattern, but it is important that we take the time to work on all of that together. Okay, I think the last thing is getting that pattern and getting started. Okay, so let's move to the next part. You made it through the introduction. Now let's get down to brass tacks, okay? We're gonna do the pattern. Let's take a look down here at this one once again. Um, this is the large extra large for those of you who didn't pay attention to that in the first part. And so this is the full swancho in the large extra large. Now I'm gonna flip this swancho upside down because this is how you're going to view your swancho as you're making it. We will begin our swancho up here at the neck and we're gonna begin with something called foundation single crochets. And the reason you start with foundation single crochets, for those of you who don't know, they have a lot more stretch than a normal single crochet. So if you um, are ever making something that needs to go around a head or maybe over a heel to fit a foot, foundation single crochets are really good to use, okay? So we start off with foundation single crochets and on round one, we're going to place markers to establish where our raglan shaping happens. And you might be saying, what is raglan shaping? Well, if you've ever seen one of those old like baseball shirts where it has like maybe um, the body of the shirt is white and then the arms of the shirt are blue and it has those lines, it's, that's a raglan shaping, okay? It's a raglan shaping. For this piece right here, we did post stitches to identify the raglan shaping. We really wanted that to be a defining feature of the piece. When we have these post stitches, what you will notice is on the body. So on the front and on the back, they have the stitch pattern that you did your um, gauge swatch on, okay? That is your stitch pattern you used your gauge swatch on. For the sleeves, which are over here, they have a slightly different stitch pattern. It is made up of treble crochets and double crochets along with the single crochet, chain one, single crochet, so on and so forth. So your sleeves have a slightly different stitch pattern than the body of your work, all right? Honestly, you guys, it's one of those things that it makes the sleeves fit really nice and um, they sit really well on your body. It looks really cool. It makes the body part open up. You can see I'm wearing an orange shirt underneath. I, I love this feature. I love the fact that they are two different stitches. But this is a prime example of why it's super important that you're paying attention, especially here at the start, because it's not the same stitch pattern through the whole thing. If you think of your sweater as quadrants, okay? I'm gonna set this like this. You have quadrant one, two, three, and four. You have a front, a sleeve, a back, and a sleeve. So we're going to have stitch markers at a raglan, a raglan, a raglan, and raglan. And the raglans identify the front, the sleeve, the back, and the sleeve, okay? What you will see here is that your sleeve increases are not as um, rapid as your body increases, and that's because we don't need all of four of these quadrants to be 100% equal, okay? We need the front and the back to be equal, and we need the two sleeves to be equal to each other, but all four don't have to be equal to each other. For that reason, you will increase differently on the sleeves than you increase on the body 
itself. Now, are you going to recognize those increases? Is that something that I'm going to be like, okay, make sure you're using your different increase? No, that's, that's not how it works. I'm just trying to help you understand the construction of a sweater and why it is that the body has, you know, it has much more of an increase here than your sleeves do, okay? Um, just so that you understand that. But that's not something that it's gonna be like written in the pattern that way. The pattern is written with the increases already written into the pattern itself. So as you're working it, you'll gradually see that your sleeves begin to make this really nice trapezoid. And then your front and back also make this really nice trapezoid. All right, now part one of this pattern, we're going to do the upper yoke, okay? We're gonna work the upper yoke. I should put this like this. We're gonna work the upper yoke. So there's an upper yoke and a lower yoke, and that's because the shaping has to change. When you're at the upper yoke, we have different shaping intervals, or, or is ratio the right word? I'm not sure. It, 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 shapes differently at the top than at the bottom because at the top we you know we have to go much more like this but if we did this the whole way we're gonna we're gonna go like that right we need it so like this and then we need it to be more longer shaping for the the rest of the dolman so that way we aren't getting a full like this because our body it doesn't go like this it's it's like this and then kind of shapes like this for a dolman and then we go straight down for the body so that's why we have the upper yoke then you will have the lower yoke, you will have the body, and then the sleeves and the cuff and all that stuff. So those are the four different sections. So for week one, part one, you are going to work the upper yoke. This is the most difficult week, once again, because we're establishing the pattern, we're making sure everything works out. But once you get through this week, the stitch patterns don't change. The stitch patterns won't change. So you'll be like, oh, I got this. This is gonna be great. All right, um, the yarn we're using is Roll With It Melange. You can see it has a really great color transition. It's not stripes, it's not marled, it's sort of tweed-like. Um, does that mean you have to use this yarn? No, if you wanna use a different yarn that maybe has more stripes or you wanna use a solid, you can absolutely do that. I will leave that up to you. But um, the reason I'm bringing it up is because when you get down to the sleeves, um, if you want them to match perfectly as far as the colors on either side, um, yeah, that's something you're probably gonna have to think about so that way you have the yarn left over from, for each sleeve so that it's at the same point moving down. Honestly, with this yarn in particular, you don't notice. Like it's not something somebody's be like, oh, you had two different balls of yarn. You're, that's not gonna work. Like that's, that's, if they're doing that, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life, okay? That's not gonna work. So honestly, I mean, obviously you can see here, we did not do that. I did not make it so that both are the exactly the same. And they look, they look great. Like it looks like it's a perfect transition from one to the next. They look awesome. So um, there's that. Okay, by this point, you should have part one of your pattern. That link again is in the video description box below, which you may be like, wait a minute, that's where all the details were. Exactly. At the bottom of that post, at the very bottom of that post, you will see a link to today's section. Uh, as each of the sections are released, all of those sections are also put in that same part of that blog post. That's why you want to make sure you bookmark that blog post. You're always going to be going back to that post. Okay. So make sure you have that pattern. Let's go ahead ahead get started on this upper yoke finally after like 30 minutes into this video we're actually going to crochet I'm going to use some plain yarn and a smaller hook so that you can easily see the stitches we're going to be working together and uh, we're going to get you going on this really cute crochet slancho all right let's begin as I mentioned I'm going to be using a solid color yarn and an H hook for my sample on the video. You use the yarn and hook that you need to get gauge. Um, no, this is not going to get me gauge, but I'm using it because I think it shows well for the video. We're gonna start off with a foundation single crochet round, just like I mentioned. And here's how I do foundation single crochets. You want to go ahead and chain two, okay? You're gonna chain two. Then you go into the first chain you completed, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through one. Now, 
I'm going to be using a marker here because I feel like it really helps you guys see what I'm doing. I'm putting that marker through that one chain I just completed, all right? There's gonna be a reason why, you'll see here in a minute. Now, I'm gonna yarn over and go through two. Go to that chain that you marked, insert your hook into that chain. I like to go underneath both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through one. Move your marker so that it's into that one chain you just completed. Yarn over, draw through two. Go back to that chain that you did, insert your hook so it's under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, move your marker up, yarn over, draw through two. You repeat this process until you get the number of foundation single crochets you need for the size you are making. Go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through one. Move your marker up, yarn over, draw through two. Just keep going. All right, that is my last one for my sample size. Now what I need to do is join with a slip stitch. So I'm going to grab my stretchy chain I have here and bring it back up, okay? So I'm gonna make sure it is not twisted. So you wanna make sure it is not twisted. And when you bring it back up, if yours is like mine, your tail is gonna be at the bottom and you'll see at the top, there's the V of the very first single crochet you did. And you're gonna join with a slip stitch into that V. So put your hook in it, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the last loop on your hook. So you just joined. Now you might be like, well, there's a gap right here. Yeah, it's there. You can use this tail to seam it closed later. If you want it closed right now so that you can remember um, to do it, you can always use your marker and just leave that there. Okay, so this was the marker that was attached to my chain, so I just attached it to the first chain, kind of to pull them together. Um, I like to do that also because that reminds me that that is, like this is my neck right? That's the top of my neck. And then I'm going to start working down. So I like stitch markers. I like them as visuals. So by placing that stitch marker there, it just allows me to be like, all right, just make sure nothing is twisted here. Everything looks good and on their way. Okay. For this next part of the pattern, we're doing round one. This round is our setup round and it's very important. Okay. So make sure you're very focused, have some stitch markers with you, and you're going to follow along with the pattern for the size you're making. My numbers are going to be different than your numbers because I'm making a size that's not even listed in the pattern because I wanted a smaller size that would be you know, easy to make here on camera. So I'm going to show you how to do these stitches, but as far as the multiples of the stitches, you want to follow along with your pattern. So make sure you have your pattern in front of you as we move to this next step. Okay. So we have finished our foundation round, which is our wrong side round. And at the end of this round, we're supposed to turn. So we will turn our work and we're going to start off with a stacked double crochet. All right, so my yarn is in back, and here's how you will do a stacked double crochet. Take your hook, go into the same stitch you just did your slip stitch in, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook. We're going then to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook, and now, if you take a look at the two loops that were on your hook, there's like, you know, there's a space between them. You're gonna take your hook just through that space, and we're gonna pierce our hook right through that space. Yarn over our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and draw through two. We just did a stacked double crochet. Now I am going to mark the first stitch of my round because I like to do that. So in the V right behind the loop on my hook, I am taking a stitch marker and it's a different stitch marker than the other ones I plan on using in my piece. So that way I don't get them confused. Okay. 
All right, so I have my stitch marker there, and now I will place three double crochet cluster into that same spot. So I'm going to yarn over my hook, go into that same spot, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go into that same spot, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go into that same spot, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. I have four loops on my hook. I yarn over, draw through all four loops. Now you might be like, what makes that a cluster, Marley? Well, I'm glad you asked, well, let me show you. We have three partially completed double crochets and with that yarn over and pull through of, of the four loops, that left us with one V on top, leaving it as one stitch. So this is called a double crochet cluster. If we were doing these partial double crochets into other stitches, it would then be like a double crochet three together. But this, because it's all in one stitch, resulting in one stitch finished, it's a cluster stitch, okay? So we did our cluster in that first single crochet. Now we go on, and you'll see here that there are parentheses, or not parentheses, brackets. Brackets, all right? Those of you who've never followed along with a pattern before, when you see a bracket, all that means is everything that is inside that bracket, you're gonna do the number of times written outside the bracket. So everything that's in that bracket, you're going to complete, and then it'll say a number outside of the bracket to complete it X number of times. Okay, so in our bracket, we have a chain two, skip two. So I'm gonna chain two, so I chain two, skip two single crochet. So skip one, skip two, and then double crochet in the next. So this is the next, so I'll do a double crochet. I'm gonna have to get more yarn here. My yarn is getting caught up on me. Then chain two. skip two, and a three double crochet cluster in the next. Those of you who have already done your gauge swatch, you know this pattern pretty well so far, right? Like this looks familiar. Now my number outside of my bracket is different than what is outside of your bracket. So make sure you're following along with the number outside of your bracket. For me, I need to do it two times. So I need to do it one more time. So for me, I'm gonna chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip two, double crochet cluster in the next. And for me, that's where I need to stop. You either have one more or two more. Oops, that's not what I wanna do. So there's my cluster. Now I'm supposed to double crochet in the same stitch as the last double crochet cluster. If you notice, it's gonna give us symmetry because we started off with the double and then we did a cluster. So now this is the center of either our front or our back and then this is going to give us symmetry. So I'm gonna do a double crochet over here. Okay, and then a chain one, skip one single crochet two double crochet in the next single. So I'm gonna do two over here. So there's one and two. Chain one, skip one single crochet and place a marker right here. Now here's a little word to the wise. These two double crochets we just did right here, those are the start of what will be our post stitches at our raglan. So when I say to put a marker right here where this chain one is, this marker is a very important marker. And this marker is going to move throughout the pattern because as we work on this pattern, we're gonna turn back and forth, which means we need this marker to move on this side of the raglan and this side of the raglan and this side of the raglan and this side of the raglan. So for this particular pattern, all of you out there who are experienced or intermediate, listen up. For this particular pattern, 
when the instructions say to move the marker, you'll notice that it tells you to move the marker after you've passed the marker in your project. It's telling you to move the marker to where you are now. And what you will notice is you're always moving your marker to after your post stitches. All right, that doesn't make sense yet because these aren't post stitches yet, but those will be post stitches. That's why we're putting our marker there. We have marked our chain one space. I want to make sure I skip one single crochet and working to the next, I'm going to start placing my treble crochets for my sleeve. Now I have to do eight treble crochets. Your project or your pattern has a different number, so make sure you're following along with the same number of treble crochets for the size you are making. But you will place one treble crochet in each of those singles the number of times the pattern tells you to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. Okay, so for me, I have eight. Once you've completed your trebles, you will chain one, skip one, two double crochets in the next single. FYI, this is the start of the other raglan, okay? So this is the raglan on the opposite side of your sleeve. You will then chain one, skip one, place a marker right there. This holds true to what I was telling you. You always place your marker essentially in that chain one space right after your post stitches. So when these become post stitches, your marker always moves to after that, okay? So far so good, right? We've made it through half of round one. Let's complete the other half. What you'll notice is it's essentially uh, exactly what you just did, only we aren't starting with stacked double crochets. We start with a double crochet. Okay, so we finished where we skipped one, right? We skipped one and then we added our marker. So in this next single crochet, we're going to do a double crochet and then a three double crochet cluster. So one, two, three partial double crochets and complete them. So there's my double crochet cluster. Now here's my bracket again. So I will chain two, skip two singles, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip two singles, double crochet cluster in the next. Whoa, almost complete that. There we go. And then remember, you repeat everything that's in that bracket the number of times outside that bracket for your size. So for me, it's two times. So I will do it one more time. So I will chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next, chain two, skip two, double crochet cluster in the next. Then I'll put a double crochet into that same stitch where that double crochet cluster was, all right? Chain one, skip one, two single crochets in the next. Again, this is gonna be the start of my raglan. So my instructions hold true. When we do our chain one and skip one, we're gonna grab a marker and place it in that chain one space. So we have that skipped one, and now you're gonna do your treble crochets again. For me, I have eight of them. For you, you have a different number. It should be the same number you did on the other sleeve, because this is your sleeve, you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
chain one, skip one, two single crochet in the next, or not single, two double crochet in the next single crochet. That's my raglan. Chain one, skip one, place my marker right here, which, you know, at the end of the row, I really kind of don't need to do this because my beginning marker is there, but I will just so that we can see. And then I need to work a slip stitch in the top of my first double crochet, which was my stacked double crochet. I have it marked right there. So I can remove my marker so I know where that stitch is. Go into the top, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull that through the loop on my hook. And now I'm supposed to turn. Now I'm not gonna turn yet. I'm gonna just set this right down so that you can see what's going on because it doesn't look like much, okay? It doesn't look like you've done very much at all, but I want you to see. So I set it down. We have the front, we have the back, and we have the two sleeves. So we have established the construction of the pattern, okay? So it's really in round two and three where we get the pattern moving along because we are going to work our wrong side row and our right side row. Um, the pattern repeat is more than just two rounds though because you have various stitches on the body of the piece. You guys know that because you've done a gauge swatch. Um, but let's go ahead, let's work a couple rounds here together Make sure you're following along with the numbers for your size. You obviously have more numbers on yours than I do right here, but yours should look a little something like this. You should have markers, okay? Your markers are in place, um, and we're good to go, all right? So let's go ahead, pick up our work. We're going to move on to round two. Round two, here we go. Round two is actually one of the easier rounds because it's just single crochets and chains, but the chains change up a little bit uh, depending on where you are. So uh, on that last row, we were supposed to turn and we start with the chain one. If you guys know me, you know I like to chain one and then turn. It's just a personal preference. You do what works best for you. But here's where we are. All right, so I've chained one and I've turned. We're going to place a single crochet into that same stacked double crochet that we just worked. Okay, so I'm going to go into it or that we just did the slip stitch to. So I'm going to go into it yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. I'm going to take my marker to represent the start of my round and put it in there just so that I know where it is, okay? Which brings me up immediately to my marker right here, right? Which is fine. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. I'm going to completely ignore this marker and in or around these two double crochets, I'm gonna do a back post half double crochet around each one of those. So those of you who are new, you might not have ever done these post stitches, so here's what we're gonna do. You yarn over your hook, go behind your work. You're gonna go to the right side if you are right-handed, you're gonna go to the left side if you're left-handed. So you go to the right side of the post of that first double crochet Go over top of it and go out the left side and pop your hook back to the back. Yarn over. Now what we're going to do is essentially we're using this hook to grab that yarn over to bring it back that same path. So bring it out the left side, back over top of that post, back out the right side and up. What you will notice is the yarn over that we just pulled through, it's right there. You wanna make sure that the yarn over you just pulled through is in front of the other loops on your hook. Okay, make sure it's in front of it. You've just pulled it up, yarn over, draw through all three loops on your hook. Okay, we're gonna do that again. Yarn over your hook. We're gonna go to the right side of this post now, okay? So we're gonna go the right side, over top, out the left side, back to the back. Yarn over, come out the left side, over top, through the right side, back to the back. That yarn over I just pulled through is in front of the three loops on my hook. I yarn over, draw through all three loops. That's a post stitch. Now, a little word to the wise, you will be working these back post half double crochets for the entirety of the yoke 
upper yoke portion, okay? And you will do that on the wrong side. So every time you're on the wrong side, you will do back post half double crochets. What you'll notice when we get to round three is on the right side, you will do front post double crochets, okay? So there's a distinct difference there and I wanna make sure you know that there is a difference between the two because your, your shaping won't work out right if you're doing half double crochets on both sides or double crochets on both sides. It's half double on the wrong side, double on the right side. All right, just a little note. So we've done our half doubles. Now we will chain two. So we chain two and it says move marker. Now this is where a lot of you who are intermediate and advanced are gonna be like, well, wait a minute. That means I'm moving my marker just up, right? Just means you're moving your marker up. That's not what I want you to do though. I want you to move your marker over here. So we skipped our marker. Now we're moving our marker over here. Again, like I mentioned before, our marker is now after our post stitches and we're gonna maintain that, okay? Our marker is after our post stitches. Now, <clears throat> so we've done our chain two, we moved our marker, we're gonna skip one treble crochet and we come up to a bracket and it says we're gonna single crochet between the stitches before the next treble crochet Okay, so we're not gonna single crochet into the top of that treble. We're gonna crochet into this space between. All right, you see that? Into the space. We're not even going into a front loop, back loop, bottom loop, anything. We're going into that space. I'm gonna stick my hook in that space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Then I chain one. Okay, then I'm going to skip two treble crochet. So I skip one, I skip two, and I'm gonna put a single crochet between the second one I skipped and the next one on the row. So I'm gonna put a single crochet again into that space. I'm not working into the actual stitches, okay? I'm working into the space. Chain one, skip two, single crochet between. Now you will do this the number of times necessary for the size you are making, all right? So you'll see it says repeat across to your marker. Oh, we have a marker here. So we're down to our last treble. I chain two. In the next two double crochets, I'm going to put a back post half double crochet. So I'm gonna skip over my marker again. Here are my two double crochets, and I'm gonna do my back post half double crochet. Yarn over my hook, insert from the right, go over top, out the left, yarn over, follow that same path back. If you're left-handed, it's opposite, but you probably know that. And then pull through all three. Yarn over my hook, do it again. Yarn over all three. Got that? Chain one this time and move my marker. So here's my marker over here that we skipped, but we needed it, right? Because we worked to our marker. Now I'm supposed to move my marker. Typically that would mean you just move your marker up, but I wanna move your marker over to that new spot. Move your marker over here, okay? Everybody with me? Now, I'm gonna put two single crochets into the next double crochet. So this first double crochet right here, I'm gonna put two single crochets into it. So there's one, there's two. Now I'm going to work what's in the bracket. So I chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space. So I'm gonna skip the cluster. Here's my next chain two space, I single crochet. And then I do that again all the way to my marker. So you'll do that all the way to your marker. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space. Here's the double crochet before my marker. All right, so I, I went to the double crochet before my marker. I'm gonna chain three, and then two single crochet into the top of that double crochet. So there's one and two. Those of you who aren't familiar with reading patterns, you might be like, well, wait a minute, there's two stars there. What do those two stars mean? Those two stars come into effect at this point. Because we're gonna repeat everything from star, 
until we get to those two stars again. So essentially, if you're looking down here, this is, this is the start of my round. We have worked half of our sweater. So we are going to repeat that other half, but because when we get to this other half, it has a stop um, at a different, we have to stop at the double stars because we're at a different point in the pattern over here. So we've, repeat, we've, we've worked one side of our sweater, so now we're gonna work the other side of our sweater. Does that make sense so far? Hopefully that is something that the visual of seeing like the piece down here and, and hearing me tell you we've worked half the sweater, that's why we go back to star, to the double star. Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? So on round two, I have finished with um, my two single crochets in the top of my double, and I repeat from star. So I go back to star, and that would be chain one. And I am going to skip over this marker, come over here to these two double crochets and work my back post half doubles. So I'm gonna work these a little bit more real time because I know that you can pause and rewind the video if you need to do those post stitches. Once I've done those back post half double crochet, I will chain two and move my marker. Now here's another little note. The difference between the chain one and chain two, um, it only changes between chains one and chain two on the sleeve portion. You always do only chain one on the body. So on the front and the back, it's always chain one. On the sleeve portion, some rounds it's chain one, some rounds it's chain two. So you really have to pay attention, okay? All right, so I did my uh, two chains, I moved my marker. I'm gonna skip one treble and then I'm back to where I put a single between that treble and that one chain one, skip two, single crochet, chain one, skip two, single crochet. Again, I'm working between those stitches. Chain one, skip two, single crochet, all the way over to where there's, there is my marker right there. I love working with the marker. <clears throat> all right, so then I'm going to chain two, skip over my marker, work my back post half double crochet, it's gonna establish our raglan. I know it's a little bit tricky to see here at the start, but this is where I'm telling you, take your time, make sure you're, you're fully in it with me. Chain one, move your marker. So we're gonna move our marker. Have you guys noticed I use a different color for my body or the sleeves? <laughs> you don't have to do that, but it's something that I do. I don't know why. It just makes me happy. All right, so I move my marker. I'm gonna do two single crochets into this first double crochet right here, right? Not, not the one I did the post in, but it's the double crochet here. I'm gonna put two singles. So there's one and two, chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space, chain three, single crochet in the next chain two space, chain three, Single crochet in the next chain two space, chain three, next space. You do this all the way across until you get down to the double star, right? So you get to the last double crochet before your marker. You'll chain three. And then this is where it's the double star. So you move, you move ahead in the pattern where you have double star. It says single crochet into the same double crochet as the first single. So remember on, at the end of the previous section, we ended, like if we didn't move to the double star, we would be placing two double crochet or two single crochets right there. Well, we've already completed one. So we're just putting one more there. And that brings us to the end of our round. So one single crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and then turn, but I'm not gonna turn yet. I'm gonna set it down so you can see. This is what we have. Nothing like super exciting, right? But I mean, so we're on the, the wrong side of our fabric. Here are my sleeves. Here's the, the front and the back of my bodies, and it's, it, or my bodies, <laughs> I have one body, my body, and um, I'm getting ready to move on. All right, so let's do round three. Round three starts off with a stacked double crochet. So with a stacked double crochet, you do not chain, so I'm just gonna turn my work. Do not chain. So I'm gonna do a stacked double crochet and a double crochet into the first double crochet. So there is the first double crochet. 
insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, insert my hook between those, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, and I do another double crochet into that stitch. Now I am going to tell you guys, if you don't like the, if you don't like the stacked double crochet and you want to do like a chain three, you could do that. Um, I just like the stacked double crochet. I think it looks better, but um, if you are having trouble with it, you can make it a chain three instead of a stacked double crochet. All right, so I did the stacked and the double crochet into that first single crochet, and then you'll see here's the star. So at some point, we're going to come back to star, probably at the halfway point again. We're going to place three double crochets in each, each of these chain three spots. So we're going to do full double crochets. These are not clusters. These are full double crochets into each of the chain three spots. So I'm doing full double crochets and I do this to the last single crochet before my marker. Pretty easy, right? I don't have to go into the chains. I'm literally going into that big space there. Makes it very easy. This is where you're going to get a lot of extra stretch to your piece um, because those chain threes and these double crochets, when you're wearing your piece, it's really going to pull and get that nice stretch on the piece and it's going to look really good. All right, it's going to open it up and be a little bit more lace like on the body. Not like full on lace, but just more open. All right, so I'm going to get to the last one on mine. All right, so I'm to my last single crochet before my marker. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm reading the pattern, so I need to pause here so I can find it. All right, three double crochets to the single crochet before marker, two double crochets in the last single crochet before my marker. So I'm going to put two double crochets in this last single. <coughs> Excuse me. Chain one. I'm going to skip this marker. And then here are my post stitches. You see my post stitches? I'm going to do front post double crochets. So I yarn over my hook. I'm going to go around my post of that. If that's the back post half double crochet I did before. This is the front post. So I yarn over from right to left, but I'm going behind the post. Yarn over, bring my yarn over back through. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over draw through two. Let's do it again. Yarn over my hook, go around my post, yarn over my hook, draw up a loop, yarn over my hook, draw through two, yarn over my hook, draw through two. Chain one and you guys guessed it, move your marker. See the markers, they might seem a little bit confusing at first and those of you who are coming to the video after the fact to be like, what is going on with these markers? Now you're like, oh, that makes total sense. <laughs> All right, so we're moving that marker after that. And the reason you have to do that, you guys, is because as we turn our work each time, if I said work until the marker, well, your marker would be over here when the next time you need it to be on this side. So that's why we have to move the marker on either side of those post stitches with each round. All right. See, that's one of those examples of teaching you, not just telling you to do it. All right, so I have moved my marker. I'm going to put two double crochets in the chain two space right here. So I'm going to put two double crochets into this very first chain two space. Two double crochets in each chain one space to the marker. So there's a chain one space. I'm going to put two double crochets there. What this is going to do, you guys, is you're working this sleeve. Your sleeve is a little bit more, I'm going to say more solid than the body of your piece. And I really like that a lot. Once you put your two double crochets in the chain two space, chain one and then two double crochets and you just keep doing that down to your marker. My marker is in my chain two space 
Let me do I do my chain one? So I'm going to put two double crochets into my marked space. Okay, you guys see how that goes so far? So once I put the two double crochets in the marked chain two, I then chain one. I'm back to my raglan, so I know in my raglan I'm going to do a front post double and another front post double, chain one, move my marker. Okay, got it. Front post double, front post double, chain one, move your marker. Now I'm going to put two double crochets in the next single crochet. So here's my single crochet. I'm going to put two doubles. So there's one. And there's two. And I repeat from star. So I go back to star and I'm going to put three double crochets in each of the chain three spaces. So this is the other half of my sweater, right? It's just like I'm repeating what I just did. We're going to put two double crochets in that last single crochet there. Chain one, front post double crochet around our raglan, both of them. Chain one, move our marker, and then here is where we're going to work on our sleeve here. We're going to put two double crochets in this first chain two. And then we're going to put two double crochets into each of the chain, chain one spots across. I get down to where my marked chain two is. So I'm going to put two double crochets into my marked space, right? Two double crochets in my marked space. Um, chain one, front post double crochet. chain one, move my marker. That brings me also to my double star. So now I'm going to slip stitch directly into where my marked stitch is. So I'm going to take that off, slip stitch into my first stitch, right? Slip stitch right there. And I've completed my round. I'm supposed to turn now, but I'm going to put it down before I turn it for you. So we have the front and the back and the sleeves starting to look a little familiar, right? After you've done your gauge swatch, this is starting to look familiar. The sleeves look pretty good. You know all the stitches now for the sleeve because it's just trebles and those singles and chain ones and then doubles and then singles and chain ones. It just goes, they go back and forth. Um, so let's work round four together, which is a wrong side, and then round five together because that's where you go back to introducing the clusters again, but the clusters aren't just worked on the, the, the foundation single crochets this time. They're worked into a different space. So I want to make sure you understand how that works. Once I get through that, I'm going to let you go and work through all the rounds you need to do for the upper yoke because I know you can do it past that point. But let's go ahead and get through round four and then round five and you'll be on your way. All right. All right. Let's do this.
At the end of round three, we're supposed to turn. I like to do my chain one and turn, so I'm going to do that. Instead of starting with the chain one on four, I, I get it done before I turn. And I begin with a single crochet into that first double crochet. And then I'm going to grab my marker and place it in the top of that so I can identify the start of my round. All right, here's my star. So I'm gonna repeat from this point when I get to the other half of the sweater. So I chain one. I am to my raglan bits. And if you've never done post stitches before, this probably looks odd to you. These ridges here you see on the wrong side, that's the top of the actual stitch that we didn't use because we worked with those post stitches. So the post stitches are really popped out on the wrong side, which means the top parts that we didn't use poke out on the, I'm sorry, the post stitches pop out on the right side, which means the parts of the stitch that we did not use are um, on the wrong side. All right, so that's, that's perfectly normal that it looks like that. And we're gonna do our back post half double crochets. Remember, whenever you're on the wrong side, you will be working back post. When you're on the right side, you work front post. Then you chain one, we're gonna move our marker. Then we're gonna single crochet in this chain one space. That brings us to our bracket. So we're gonna work everything that's in our bracket across to our marker. So we're going to chain one, skip two double crochets, and then single crochet between um, the space between that double and that double. Chain one, skip two, work into that space. Chain one, Skip two, work into that space. Chain one, skip two, work into that space. And we repeat that to the marker. So I will chain one, because there's, there's my marker right there, right? So I chain one and I single crochet into the mark chain one space. Chain one, back post, half double crochet back post, half double crochet, chain one, move my marker, all right, not too difficult, right? All right, let's move on to the body. It becomes very rhythmic, you guys. So we finished with our back post and we did our chain one, and now we moved our marker, we single crochet in the next double crochet chain three, skip one double crochet, then single crochet in the space between where that double crochet is and where this uh, three double crochet group is. So I single crochet and then I will chain three, skip a group, single crochet between the two groups, chain three, 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 skip the next double crochet group across to the last double crochet before the marker. So I'm gonna go right here, chain three, Here's the last double crochet before my marker. I single crochet into the last double crochet before the marker. So if you remember at the start, I single crocheted before I, I went into going between and I'm ending with a single crochet, all right? So it makes it very symmetrical. We're symmetrical the whole way down, okay? So I finished with the single crochet in the last stitch before my marker. Now I repeat from star. So I go to chain one. I work a back post, half double crochets. Chain one and move my marker. Woo! I don't know, to me the hardest part is just keeping track of where I am in the pattern itself. Like I have to always look and just kind of repeat to myself what I've done and what I'm looking forward to doing, right? I don't know if you guys are the same way, um, but I am. But this is where we are so far. It looks 
pretty good. It's, I mean, they're not complicated stitches, right? It's just making sure you get everything in the correct place. So we're gonna work across the sleeve and then work the other side of the body. So here we go, uh, continuing on. So I did the back post, I did my chain one, I moved my marker, I'm single crocheting into the chain one space. So there's the chain one space, I'm gonna single crochet. And then here's the bracket, chain one, skip two doubles, single crochet between the stitches. Chain one, skip two doubles, single crochet between the stitches. Chain one, skip two doubles, single crochet between the stitches. Chain one, skip two doubles, single crochet between the stitches. Chain one, skip two doubles, single crochet in the marked chain one space. Chain one, back post, half double crochet. And another back post, half double crochet. Chain one, move my marker. Single crochet into the first double crochet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chain three. Skip the double crochet. Single crochet in that part before the group. Chain three. And then single crochet between the group. Chain three. Skip the group, chain three. Skip the group, single crochet, chain three. Skip the group, chain three. Skip the group, single crochet, chain three. Skip the group, right? There's no more group, so we come here to the last. This is our last double crochet. So. Um, we're going to say work across to the last double crochet before the marker, which is right here, and then it's double star. So we have to go down to where the double star is. At the double star, we're supposed to slip stitch to the first single crochet because our first single crochet is already made in the top of that double. So I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. And there we are. That's the wrong side. I'm going to turn my work to the right side because we start off with our stacked double. You see how it's starting to really take shape? If you were to pinch it closed, you can see it starts to really take shape just like this. Now I'm going to work you through this next round. I want you to see how these clusters work up on the body. I know you know how to do them already because we already did them on, was it round one? Um, and you've done them on your gauge swatch, but let's see how they work into our fabric as it's already starting to become established. All right, so let's work through that together. I'm looking down here and we're going to begin round five. Put my marker in. and I can remove the starting marker for me. Alrighty. And we're gonna start off with our stacked stitches. So I'm gonna start off with my stacked double crochet. Again, if you wanted to work chain threes, you could. I'll put my marker right there. All right, here we go. Chain two. Double crochet in the next chain three space. So here's a chain three space. So I'm going to double crochet in the next chain three space. Chain two, three double crochet cluster in the next chain three space. Remember the cluster is where you partially complete those double crochets and then yarn over and draw through all of them to complete it. All right, so that's the end of the brackets, then we repeat. Chain two, the next chain three space, do a double, chain two, the next chain three space, do your cluster. And you'll do this all the way pull that up. You, um, let me get back, repeat across the last chain three space before the marker. Oops, that's supposed to be a double. Chain two, and then a cluster. This would be the last chain three space before my marker. So um, if I'm ending 
There's my cluster. So the last chain three space before my marker, I chain two, double crochet in the next chain three space, chain two, double crochet in the last single crochet before my marker. So there's my single crochet, so I'm gonna double crochet into that last single before my marker. Chain one, here are my post stitches. So I'm doing my front post, double crochets. When I'm doing front posts, I do double crochets, all right? Um, so I did front post, double crochets, chain one, and move my marker. Looks pretty good, right? Are you looking at yours? It looks very symmetrical. It should look very nice and uniform. As you take a look at mine, you can see that my post stitches are really starting to show up here. My pattern stitch is showing up great. Again, we're doing these um, clusters. They're like right on top of what the clusters you did in, um, I guess that would have been round two. Um, so the clusters and the double, clusters double, you're doing the exact, essentially the same thing, it's just you have more stitches now. We just finished with our post stitches, let's go ahead and we will work our sleeve stitch now. So we've moved our marker and we're moving on to the sleeve. So I gotta find my spot. Here we go, we're gonna treble in the next chain one space. So right here we're gonna place our treble And then we're gonna put two treble in each of the chain one spaces all the way over to our marker. So in each one of these chain one spaces, besides this first one, we're gonna put two treble crochets. Just like how before we did um, two double crochets, we're gonna do two treble crochets. So we just get taller stitches, but we're putting two into each chain one space. All right, so I did that all the way over. In each chain one space, all the way over to my marker, I'm going to put a treble into that chain one space that's marked, just one. Chain one, front post, double crochet around my raglan here. Chain one, move my marker. Double crochet in the next single crochet. And then I repeat from star. So one half is completed. You guys know how to do this, right? Let's just do this second half here together real quick. Chain two double crochet in the next chain three space, chain two, do three double crochet cluster in the next chain three space, chain two, double crochet, chain two, Chain two, chain two, double crochet in the last chain three, <clears throat> and then I have to find myself, <laughs> I have to find where I am in the pattern. Um, the last chain two, double crochet, and then chain two, double crochet in the last single crochet before the marker, chain one, front post double, and then another front post double, chain one, move our marker. treble crochet in the first chain one, and then two treble crochets in each chain one space. Two 
to the marker. treble crochet into the chain one stitch space that's marked, chain one, front post half double, not half double, I'm sorry, front post double. All right, so <clears throat> chain one, move my marker, this puts me at my double star, so I go to where my double star is, it says slip stitch into the first double crochet, so there's my marked stitch up there. So my first, that was my stacked, I'm going to slip stitch into my stacked double. And there we are. You guys see? Looking pretty good, right? I feel like you're able to see it really well with the solid color here on video. Um, not that it doesn't show up very well in the multicolor, it's just I thought it looked better in the solid color. I have worked up several rounds of the multicolor so you can kind of get a good look of what it looks like besides just on the sample. I want to show you in a different um, colorway of the Roll With It yarn, so let me show you that. Okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Here is a little bit that I was working up on my own. You can see that as yours grows, the raglan really starts to pop up. And so obviously mine, you would face it this way. This is the way it looks coming away from me. Here's the start of my round. As the stitches begin to grow, you can see you get a very beautiful pattern. Um, this gauge here is a little bit tighter than the gauge given in the pattern, but I could loosen it up a little bit more if I wanted to. Uh, but you can see right here the, the body stitches versus the um, sleeve. So here's my sleeve stitches. It's really a little bit more solid. My body is a little bit more open. And I don't know if you guys can tell this, but if you're looking at this, obviously the sleeves, you know, they don't grow nearly as much as the body grows because we didn't, you know, there's not as many stitches. But if you're looking at your chart, if you were to highlight, you know, what's going on, you see the yellow there? Like that's like the wedge of the increases that you're creating as you're working down your chart. And I, I did that on my own. That's not on yours. That's just on mine. Um, Cause I just wanted to show you like, hey, this is, this is what you're doing. Like if you were to just go like this, you know, all in here, that's your stitch pattern. That's like your gauge swatch you were working with, right? So as you've created extra stitches, as you go and do each round, you're creating a chance to do more multiples of those stitches. And that's what gives you the ability to to make all of those increases, well, not the ability of the increases, the increases give you the ability to get the shape that you want so that it fits. Okay, so this is the yoke shaping for the upper half. That is your homework. You have to complete the entire upper half. Now make a note that each size ends at a different spot of the instructions. So make sure you're following the instructions for the size you're working on, okay? So this is the upper yoke. There's gonna be a lower yoke, so don't be like, oh, it's so short or, or anything like that because there's still more to come. But this is the portion I want you to complete for this week. And uh, once you get that done, set it aside and uh, pick, a, pick up something else. Have some fun and, and work on a little something else until it's time to get part two um, next week. All right, everybody, I hope I did not scare you so far. I know this is a long video. This will be the longest one of all of them, I do believe, because there was just a lot of information that goes into the start of an event like this. But as we work along, you guys will know everything. Everything's kicking. I don't have to explain how it works. You're going to be just fine. Now, I guess the last thing to do here is to show you what the, the other size looks like on me. So let me go ahead. I'm going to change out of this. Let me show you. So this here, this is the 2X, 3X size, and let me show you the other one. 
And ta-da, this one is the large, extra large size. Now, if you guys can see that, you can see the sleeves are a little bit more three-quarter length for me on this size. Um, definitely could make them longer if I wanted to. Not gonna lie though, I much more prefer three-quarter length. Like, I, I love this length. Um, this one is also a little bit more cropped on me. It hits right at my waist. Um, I'm five foot ten. Robin is just barely five foot. So on her, this is not cropped. Um, you can see it fits. Like I still have room, right? Like I have. You guys can see through the sweater itself. I still have room as it's opened up around my body, um, but it is not as big and uh, um, oversized as my larger one. So the one that's supposed to fit me is much more oversized. Whereas if I was making a full on sweater, this would be more of the size I would choose because um, it fits me. I'm not going to lie, I really love this. I hate that I have to send it back to Robin. I love the three quarter length. I love the cropped. Like, I think it's adorable. Um, it's super cute. The raglan looks really good. I love everything about this. Um, on me, this size is a little bit more sweater versus swancho. It's a much more fitted dolman, um, which I prefer. I, I like to be able to move my arms without things going crazy, so uh, this is really good. But hopefully this will help you in choosing your size. Um, let me pull my seat up. <laughs> I feel funny. Um, yeah, I totally, I, I love this sweater very much. I hope you do too. Um, and um, I can't wait to see what colors you use, what size you choose, and um, just see your progress along the way. Okay guys, I will see you in next week's video. Take care, I'm Marley Bird. This is the Crochet Swatcho Crochet Along for 2022. I'll talk to you soon, bye.